Hello fellow coffee botherers, this is a third video in the new Sage or Breville dual boiler series and in this video we're going to be demonstrating dialing in and general workflow for pulling glorious shots of espresso. Dialing in, for anyone not familiar with the term, means tweaking things to get the best tasting espresso for us. It's important to emphasise, I think, that we're trying to get the best tasting espresso for ourselves or for whoever we're making coffee for, which is why I always recommend focusing mainly on taste and less on the numbers. So to start with, I'm getting my coffee beans out from airtight storage. They're not stored in the hopper. Why? Because the hopper isn't airtight. Even if there's a gasket on the lid, there's a gap between the burrs. And although that gap is small, it is bigger than air. Also, probably even more importantly, temperature and humidity is going to affect beans in the hopper more than it will affect them in airtight storage kept somewhere cool and relatively dark. This is especially true for integrated grinder espresso machines because I think instability of temperature and humidity in the hopper in integrated grinders is possibly one of the reasons that people struggle with consistent shots when they're emptying their bags of coffee into the hopper. So I'm just chucking in the hopper what I think I'll use for this video. If I run out, I'll just add more. I'm using my chocolate brownie blend, and although the dual boiler is very capable of working with just about any beans, the Smart Grinder Pro, being an entry-level grinder, doesn't quite have the grunt to properly cope with lighter roasts, especially less porous, higher-grown light roasts. If you're using my coffee beans at the Coffee Works, seaworks.co.uk, and obviously other coffee beans are available, just tick the Sage Coffee Machines filter box, and you'll see all of the coffees that I rate as being great for use with Sage grinders. The recipe I'm using for this bean is a 1 to 2 ratio, 93 degrees Celsius, about 199 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll be looking for a shot time of somewhere between 20 to 35 seconds. This is a much wider shot window than you'll usually see, and as you get more familiar with everything, and especially if you upgrade your grinder to something a bit more precise in the future, you may find that you've ended up aiming for a more traditional, smaller shot window. But remember, it's all about taste, it's not about numbers. The numbers are just guides. When it comes to dose, I'd recommend starting out using the razor tool and dosing just enough so that the razor tool just takes a slither off the surface, so you can be sure you're getting a level surface after tamping. With a stock double basket, you'll probably find that it's about 21 grams, but don't be too concerned with dose weight for now. While you're getting started, if you're new to home espresso, I'd focus on dose volume and just use a dose weight for achieving the target ratio. Dose weight and dose volume aren't quite the same thing. I need to know what the dose weight is so I can aim for a 1 to 2 ratio. For example, if it's 21 grams, then I'm looking for a 42 gram shot for a 1 to 2. The most important element of dosing though is volume, which means the height of the puck. And this is what the razor tool does. As well as ensuring a level puck, it ensures the correct headspace, the space between the puck of coffee and the shower screen above. As you get more experience, you may well find that you don't use the razor tool and use other tools such as the distribution tool, and that's fine. But what I'm focusing on in this video is people who are just getting into home espresso. And if that's you, I'd recommend starting out like this, using the razor tool and not being overly concerned with what the dose weight is. Some people start out purely focusing on dose weight, which means that the dose volume is a constantly changing variable, and this can make the learning curve a bit steeper. Ratio, by the way, is a variable that can be used to balance the shot, and this is especially helpful when using machines that don't have adjustable brew temperature. The dual boiler obviously does have adjustable brew temperature, and it's very precise, so with this machine, it's fine to keep the ratio about the same and balance out the shot with brew temperature. But if you're using a machine with less precise control over the temperature, just keep in mind that ratio is a great tool for doing that. I'm starting out at a 1 to 2 ratio and a brew temperature of 93 degrees Celsius. If it's too bitter over extracting, then I can just drop the temperature slightly, or I could drop the ratio back slightly, reduce the yield, but keep the dose the same. If it's on the sour side, under extracting, then I can raise the temperature, but increasing the ratio will have a similar effect. So I'm weighing the portafilter first and tearing so I can weigh the dose. And initially I'm dosing the weight that I'm expecting will result in just trimming a small amount off with the razor tool. I'm doing the WDT device distribution technique in which we're just stirring the coffee with a multi-pronged tool. You can jab some sewing needles into a cork or just buy a WDT tool like this. There are loads available these days. 
This is really straightforward. I'm just stirring in concentric circles to break any clumps and evenly distribute and then raking the surface horizontally and then vertically or vice versa. Really doesn't matter, but make sure you distribute clockwise. Too many people distributing their pucks anti-clockwise at the same time could cause the earth to tilt on its axis, causing sea levels to rise. Obviously, I'm kidding. Feel free to mix it up. Even use your non-dominant hand if you want to be a real rebel. Tamp with your thumb and forefinger at opposite sides so you can feel either side of the basket as this gives you a good idea of how level you are. Tamp with the force of exactly 11 to 12 molecular nanogixels, which is a word I've just made up so you might find that difficult. Basically just push until it stops. Tamp pressure isn't all that important, it's tamp consistency which is, so as long as you're tamping at a relatively consistent pressure, that's fine. You can get calibrated tampers and I'll be covering this in a later video in which I'll be talking about various little upgrades. Different baskets, puck screens, distribution tools, tampers, bottomless porter filters or vandibular extension waffle cone goggle mufflers if you have one of those. And I'm weighing the porter filter now so we can see what the dose is after tamping and trimming. And I'll then aim for a one to two ratio. So whatever the dose weight is, I'll aim for a shot yield of twice that. The first shot at grind size 10 on the Smart Grinder Pro, 93 degrees Celsius, 21 grams in to about 45 grams out, so just over 1 to 2 ratio. Not quite as um, bold in the chocolate notes that it can be, it should be. Very close, but just not quite there. To me, this shot is just a bit lacklustre. Not quite as bold and chocolatey as my chocolate brownie blend should be. So I'm just going to up the temperature by 2 degrees to 95 degrees Celsius. Not changing anything else. Same grind size, same ratio. Let's see what happens. Looks different. Looks More creme. Yeah, and that is, even though we've got the same shot time, slightly bolder. Slightly better extraction. Pretty happy with that. Dialed in. Perfect. So there you go, dialing in and workflow for a standard double shot using the Sage or Breville dual boiler. For more on the various aspects of dialing in that I've mentioned in this video, dose ratio, shot time, and so on, see the series of videos on simplifying home espresso. Sylvester Stallone, yes, him again, sold his dog for $50 just before he sold the screenplay that he wrote called Rocky because he was skint or broke. He bought it back again for $3,000 once he'd sold the screenplay and both the dog and the guy he'd originally sold it to ended up being in the movie. That has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but click the like button if it makes you happy that he bought back his dog. So that means if you don't click the like button, this dog will be sad. Thank you very much for watching and if you love coffee and enjoyed this video we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how to's on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click my face to subscribe. Tatty bye!